Well, hey everybody, welcome to Why It's Great with Dan Drake. Dan Drake here. And today I wanna to talk about why Michael Hyatt's Free to Focus is great. Now, this video is a little bit different because uh, this video I actually recorded a while back for another YouTube channel that for various reasons I'm moving away from the shift focus to why it's great. But this book I thought it deserved to be migrated over to this channel because I want to keep talking about it. It is a great book, probably one of the best books I read, if not the best book I read this year. And uh, so it needed a new intro to be on this channel. So this is it. This is why Michael Hyatt's Free to Focus is great. Check it out. Let me tell you, this book is awesome. I don't want to overhype it, but it's amazing. And I'm honestly not too familiar with Michael Hyatt's other products. I've not read one of his books before, and I don't use the Full Focus Planner. But I'm telling you now after reading this, I'm going to be reading more of his books, and I'm going to be using that planner. Because the system he lays out for productivity does exactly what is promised. It is a map on how to get to a place where you can achieve more by doing less. And I know that sounds like a, a too good to be true promise, but as I've gone through the book, done the worksheets that are in the back, I can see the route. I can see how you can actually do that. And so let's dive in, let's go give a overview of the table of contents, the bulleted list of what's going on in the book, and then I'm going to break down the first section so that you can see how valuable this tool is. It has three big bulleted sections that are then each of those three sections divided into three chapters. They are stop, cut, and act. So under stop, it's formulate, evaluate, and rejuvenate. Under cut, it's eliminate, automate, and delegate. And under act, it's consolidate, designate, and activate. But we're just going to go over that first section right now. The first section under stop is to formulate. And this section is foundational because before you can get to where you're going, you first have to define what your destination is, right? So in formulate, you have to decide what you want. You have to decide what your goal is. Where do you wanna go? What is the goal of productivity? All of the things you're gonna be doing in your work every day, 40 hours a week or more, you're gonna be pushing forward towards what? What will you be doing? Where do you wanna go? And so you really have to stop and formulate your goals, your direction, your vision, and your dreams. In the book, Michael Hyatt gives all these examples of how a lot of people work themselves to the bone. He even highlights a Japanese word that means death by overwork. And yet they don't even really know why they're doing it or where they're going. And that kind of lack of purpose leads to a life without meaning, without a sense of drive. It leads to unhappiness. And so what he recommends is that you set an objective. And he says that the best objective is freedom. I mean, that's why it's called free to focus. Where do you want to get to? You want to get to freedom. Well, freedom to him looks like being free to focus on your work, to do good work, be free to be present in the moment, especially with the people you care about, and be present in the moment with your work and your staff and your team, free to be spontaneous, and then also the freedom to do nothing, which to a lot of people with, with a lot of hard work drive, uh, that sounds like you're being lazy. But Michael Hyatt shows in the book that actually people need time to reflect. They need time to just really do nothing because that's where creativity really flourishes. When you can free your mind of responsibility you can really put your mind on something else. That's why people do hobbies, right? Because all of a sudden you can kind of solve problems in the background and you can never tap into that and use that strategically if you're too busy. So what's your vision? And here's the, the most powerful part of that for me that is a game changer. And that's you get to choose your life. You get to choose. 
Never ever make an excuse like you just randomly found yourself somewhere and you feel stuck and you don't know how you got there. Well, he would point out you got there little choices, little by little. You drove yourself there, maybe because of a lack of purpose or lack of drive. But no matter where you find yourself, here's the empowering part. You get to choose. You have authority in your own life and you can make small changes that will accumulate over time so sit down stop and formulate what's your vision where do you want to go what thing do you want to be different in your life and you have the ability the authority to make small changes to make that happen the second thing you have to do is stop and evaluate which means to determine your course. And in the book, Michael Hyatt highlights four productivity zones that help you determine where you are and where you need to get to. Because that's the first step in evaluating, right? You have to determine where you actually are and you have to be honest about it. Like a GPS, right? You open your phone, well, you find on the map, there's that restaurant, right? But it can't tell you how to get there unless it knows exactly where you are and so that's what you have to do in this second step evaluate where you are using four zones of productivity then you can decide how you're actually going to get to where you want to go those four zones of productivity are based on two powerful words right passion and proficiency now passion are the things that you love to do it's like they wake you up in the morning and you're excited and driven to do it right passion the things you would probably do whether or not you were getting paid to do them passion right the second is proficiency the things that you're actually really really good at he actually gives a good distinction between proficiency and aptitude now aptitude just means you have a natural gifting toward it right but proficiency takes it a step further where you can actually harness that aptitude and put it to work for you and, and accomplish goals with it and possibly even receive money in exchange for you doing it. So you're not really proficient at it until you can put it to work for you. And so using those two words, passion and proficiency, he sets up four zones. And the four zones are this, the drudgery zone, the disinterest zone, the distraction zone, and the desire zone. And that's where you really want to be. That's where passion and proficiency meet. And he says that if you want to be successful in your work, you want to get to where you want to go, and you want to get there uh, achieving more by doing less, then you need to do 90% of your job in that desire zone, or more, as much as you can, meeting your passion, your drive, the things that wake you up in the morning, with the things that you're proficient at, that you're so good at that you can put them strategically to work to get results. That's where you can achieve more by doing less. So here's the third and final section we'll cover today, stop and rejuvenate, which really means re-energize your mind and your body. In the book, Michael Hyatt goes over this concept that time is fixed, right? We all have 24 hours in every day, same amount of hours in a week, you can't buy a 25th hour, right? But your energy is renewable and it's flexible. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you're strategic about how you rejuvenate your mind and your body, you can actually do more in a day. Something like taking a 15 minute break or taking a 20 minute nap, right? Those things seem counterproductive because you're losing that time to being unconscious or to doing nothing. But studies have shown that if you take that time, then the quality of your work after will be better. You'll actually do more and better work after that than you would have if you didn't. There's this idea of diminishing returns, right? There's a point at which the more you work, the less you accomplish, right? The less you achieve. So by taking time to stop and rejuvenate yourself within reason, can actually lead to more productivity. And in this chapter, he gives seven energy renewing practices to put in to every day or every week. And here they are. Sleep, eat, move, connect, play, reflect, and unplug. And I won't go fully into those because that's what the book is for. 
But it's obvious, I think, those are all simple things that most of us already do, but we're shortchanging ourselves. We're not sleeping enough. We're not eating the right kinds of foods. We're not moving enough. We're not connecting with the right people. We're not taking time to play and have fun. We're not reflecting on our day, uh, and we're not unplugging. I mean, gosh, our smartphones, these devices, like we are slaves to them. And so he highlights seven areas and seven ways that we can actually rejuvenate our mind and our body and achieve more by doing less. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it beneficial. I hope even just this one section we covered uh, has given you ideas and like stirred your imagination of how you can achieve more by doing less. And I also hope it has convinced you to go out and buy this book and read it. I'm telling you, it is amazing. I hope I'm not overhyping it. It really has helped me. I'll end with a final story for those of you who have made it this far. Um, in the, the opening chapter of the book, before it gets into this first section, Michael Hyatt tells a story of when he thought at a young age he was having a heart attack. He had symptoms of a heart attack. And when he went into the hospital, it turned out that his heart was fine. But his doctor asked him if he was under a lot of stress. Michael Hyatt had to admit that yes, yes, he was an, under a lot of stress. And his doctor told him that stress can manifest along with something like acid reflux to mimic the symptoms of a heart attack. And if left unchecked, stress can manifest in other more damaging and more harmful physical ways. And that really resonated with me because at about 25 years old, I had the same thing happen. I was working in a ministry job. I was working under a church context that was less than ideal, to be honest. There was a lot of work, a lot of stress, and I was putting in so much time and energy and mental anguish to this ministry that along with some acid reflux, the stress, I thought I was having a heart attack. We rushed me to the hospital. My heart was fine, but the stress had manifested physically. And so that was a clue that we needed to, to leave that context and go into a new ministry. And so that's what has resonated so hard with me in this book is that I know what it's like, and maybe you do too, to feel like you're working and working and working and not really getting where you want to go, not seeing the results you want to see, and maybe even damaging yourself, your body, your mind or your relationships because of your job or your ministry. And this book was a wake up call that that's not healthy. These are healthy ways to actually work, be productive and achieve more by doing less. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Why It's Great exists to bring positivity to the internet. Each video will cover why songs, artists, books, films, and so many more things are great. So if you believe in our mission, please consider subscribing. And if you love our videos, please head over to our Patreon page and consider a monthly pledge. This video was also brought to you by Audible. Click the link in the description to sign up for a free trial and you'll get not one but two free audiobooks. Before you go, please smash that like button and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear about ways you're helping to bring positivity to the internet. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.